What? Ether for set sucks, they never work. But we need them to test smart contracts. If we cannot test smart contracts, we cannot deploy in production. And we don't get paid. So in this video, I'm going to build my own Ether for set that works all the time. If you're new here, I'm Julian, and on Eat the Blogs, I help you to become a professional Web3 developer. And if you want to know how to get started in the industry, check out my free masterclass. The link is down below. So we're going to build an app that looks like this. I know it doesn't look like much, but it's all we need for an Ether faucet. We put our address in this box, we click on a button, and it sends us some testnet Ether. Very simple and very useful. But why are we doing this? There is a very important reason. When you build a Web3 app, there is a small program called a smart contract, and it runs on the blockchain. But here's the issue. Once the smart contract is deployed on the blockchain, the code cannot be changed anymore. Why? Well, that's because it's the whole point of a blockchain. It's supposed to be immutable. Okay, but what if there is a bug? If we can't update the code, we can't fix the bugs. Ouch. That's why before we deploy a smart contract, we need to make sure it's 100% correct. We need to get rid of all the bugs. That's not gonna be easy. But how can we be so sure that our code is good? By testing our smart contract. But there is still a problem. To run this test, we need to deploy the smart contract to a blockchain. We could do it on the real Ethereum blockchain. That's what we call the mainnet network. But wait a second. When we run test, it will send transactions. A lot of transactions. And we have to pay the transaction fees for each of these transactions. So if we do this on mainnet, it's going to be super expensive. That's why nobody tests on mainnet. Well, almost nobody. So what are we going to do? Because of this problem, blockchain developers created alternative blockchain networks just for testing smart contracts. These are called testnet. On testnet, it doesn't cost anything to send a transaction. And it doesn't matter if you break something. Okay, nice story. But how does it relate to our Ether faucet? When you use this testnet, you also need to pay for transaction fees. But you don't pay with normal Ether. You pay with what is called testnet Ether. It's like a fake version of Ether just for our testnet network. But here's the problem. To get this testnet Ether, you need to use special apps called faucets. You can use these apps for free, but they are very unreliable. And if you cannot get this testnet Ether, it's going to massively slow you down in your work as a smart contract developer. But what if we had our own faucet? We wouldn't rely on these public faucets, and we would never be stuck. So here's the plan. In the faucet I'm going to build, there will be three parts. The front end, the back end, and an Ethereum node. The front end is where the users will interact with the faucet. User will enter their address and they will click on a submit button. And it will be a regular web page with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. In the back end, we'll process the requests that are coming from the front end. And it's going to be built with Node.js. And our Ethereum node is going to mine testnet Ether so that our faucet always has some testnet Ether available. Okay, nice plan. I'm not sure that everything will work especially the part with the Ethereum node, but we will try and we will see up to where we can go. And when we think about it, the front-end and the back-end will be quite simple. ChatGPT should be able to handle it. So ChatGPT code a faucet for distributing testnet Ether back-end code using Node.js, front-end code using JavaScript and React. Okay, let's see what we got here. So here we have our main component app, and here we have our form where we are going to put our address the button where we click and it's going to trigger this function and this function is going to hit our backend and pass it our address it's very really basic but for our v1 it will be enough and let's see what we have for the backend code so first we import a couple of libraries express is to build a server and web3 is to interact with the blockchain and here we're going to connect to the blockchain so here the connection url is wrong we are going to use the sepolia testnet because that's the recommended testnet at the moment and after we're going to import our private key and this address is going to be used to send ether to the user so we need to keep this private key secure on our server otherwise everybody can steal all the testnet ether of the faucet and after we have our endpoint where we process the request so we extract the address from the http request we verify that the address is valid and after we build a transaction, we're going to send one Ether to the user, but we could decide whatever value we want here. We sign the transaction, we send it, and we respond to the front end. So it could be slightly more sophisticated. For example, we could wait for the confirmation that the transaction was indeed mine and successful. But since this is the V1, it's good for now. 
But wait a second, where does the ether come from? In our faucet, we will send the ether from our address. But this address needs to get some ether first. And for that, my plan was to run a validator node for the Sepolia testnet. Validator? When Ethereum was still using proof of work, we were using the word miner. Miners are entities that validate and add transactions to the Ethereum blockchain. And as a reward, they receive Ether. But for Ethereum 2.0, we don't use the term miner anymore. Instead, we use the word validator. So if we run our validator in reward, we're gonna get some Ether, and that's the Ether that we will use for our faucet. Okay, but how are we going to run this validator? The validator is an open source software and it's free to use. So we're going to download the code of a validator and run it on our laptop. There are two separate software that work together, an execution node and a consensus node. The consensus node connects to the other consensus nodes of other validator on the Ethereum blockchain. And that's the part that will maintain an up-to-date version of the blockchain. And the execution node is the part that will run the transactions. There are a couple of options for execution and consensus node. It doesn't matter which one you choose. I chose these two implementations. I started the execution node, I started the consensus node, I passed it the URL of the execution node so that you can communicate with it. Et voila! My Sepolia node was running. Everything was looking good, but after I waited a few hours, I realized there was a problem. I wasn't earning any ether. What? Aren't we running a validator? Actually, no. What I was running is just called a beacon node. A beacon node is a node that can just read the blockchain and propagate transactions to other nodes. But if you want to run a validator, it's different. If you want to run a validator node, you need to launch an extra process on the consensus node. But here's the problem. The Sepolia testnet is a very special blockchain. It's what we call a proof of authority blockchain, meaning that all the validators of the Sepolia testnet needs to be pre-approved by the maintainers of the Sepolia testnet. It sucks. If we cannot mine Ether, there is no way our faucet can work. If in the future the Sepolia testnet open up to any validator, we can revisit our project, but for the moment we will have to fall back to a public faucet. But maybe that's not so bad. Maybe one of them has a decent uptime. So I decided to make a comparison of all the existing faucets. For one month every day, I used all of them to see which one has the most uptime. And there was one faucet that stood out. It was way more reliable than all the other faucets. It's the faucet of Infura. Infura is part of Consensus, one of the biggest company in Ethereum. Their main product is a blockchain API for blockchain developers. And they also just released a brand new faucet. It's supported by a very reliable infrastructure, but what is their secret sauce? What make them so reliable? Internally, Infura uses their own notification service, HAL, to notify them when the faucet is down. So if you want to use the faucet of Infura, it's very simple. You go to this website, you paste your address, click on this button, then you have to log in. If you don't have an account yet, you can create a free one. It takes you back to the screen, you click again, and here you go. And after, you can check that the Ether was actually sent to your address by using the Blockchain Explorer of Sepolia. And if you go back to the faucet of Infura, you can see that there is another testnet available, Linea. Linea is a L2 scaling solution based on the zero-knowledge technology. It allows you to deploy smart contracts with almost the same security as Ethereum, but with a much lower cost. And zero knowledge is a big trend in the Ethereum ecosystem, so you have to follow this. And to test your smart contract on the Linear network, you can use the Linear testnet. And we can use the Infra faucet to get some Ether for the Linear testnet. It works exactly like the faucet for Sepolia. You paste your address, and it will send you some testnet Ether. And this time you have to use another blockchain explorer to make sure that the Ether actually arrived. And what's great is that on Linea, it's 100% compatible with the technology of Ethereum. If you know how to deploy a smart contract on Ethereum, you also know how to deploy it on Linea. You don't trust me? I'm going to prove it to you by deploying a smart contract on Linea. How are we going to do that? We are going to use MetaMask, which is a wallet for Ethereum, and Remix, an online IDE for Solidity, the programming language for smart contract. And we're also going to use the blockchain API of Infra to propagate the transaction. First step is to configure MetaMask. So you can install MetaMask very easily as a Chrome extension. MetaMask stores the private key of your addresses, which allow it to sign transactions. 
But how are we going to tell MetaMask to connect to the linear testnet? For that, we are going to configure a new network. There are a couple of info to fill. For the name, you can put whatever you want. Then there is the RPC URL. That's the URL that will be used to connect to the linear testnet. So in our case, we are going to use the infrastructure of Infra. So if you go in your dashboard in Infra, you create a new API key. And in the next screen, you will see the URL for the linear testnet. And you just have to copy paste this in MetaMask. For the chain ID, that's a parameter that you can find on this website. You copy it from here, paste it in MetaMask. And for the currency symbol, it doesn't matter, you can put whatever you want. And we switch to the linear testnet. But now, if you look at your Ether balance in MetaMask, you will see zero. Huh? Didn't we just use the linear faucet? Yes, but we haven't imported this address in MetaMask. So to import our address in MetaMask, we click here, we add the private key, and that's it. Now we can see the correct balance. Okay, we just set up MetaMask, congrats. Next, we still have to deploy the spot contract. For that, we are going to remix the online IDE for Solidity. Solidity is the main programming language for smart contract. But don't worry, we are going to keep it simple. So I have created a very basic smart contract using the latest version of Solidity. And we are going to deploy it. So to deploy it, we go to the deployment tab and we need to select the correct network. Hmm, that's weird. We don't see the linear testnet. Oh, actually it's normal. It's because Remix doesn't know all the testnet that exist. But if you go through MetaMask, you can use any testnet, even the one that Remix doesn't know. So we select MetaMask in this drop down, and normally it should show us the address that is currently selected in MetaMask with the correct balance of testnet Ether. And after, all we need is to click on the deploy button. Why do we have an error message? It says that the deployment is going to fail. That's strange. Let's try anyway. So here you see the confirmation pop-up of MetaMask. It's a security feature. MetaMask just want to make sure that we really wanted to send a transaction. We confirm the transaction and normally it should deploy. Damn it, it didn't work. The deployment failed. Why is that? Could it be a version problem? Linear testnet is supposed to be EVM based, which means it's supposed to be compatible with Ethereum. But the Ethereum protocol is constantly evolving. And sometimes there are new instructions that are added to the EVM, which can lead to differences across different EVM blockchains. That's perhaps a problem. The latest version of Solidity started to use a new instruction of the EVM. So perhaps that the linear testnet wasn't updated yet. And perhaps that if we go down one version of Solidity, it will solve the problem. So let's try this. In Remix, we change the Solidity version used in our smart contract. We redeploy, and yes, it worked. Fantastic. Wow, that was really interesting. But let's recap. Smart contract developers need testnet Ether to test their smart contracts. But existing Ether faucets are unreliable. To solve this problem, we try to build our own Ether faucet. Everything was going well until we tried to mine some Ether on the Sepolia testnet. And the Sepolia testnet is a permission blockchain, which means that we cannot run a validator unless we are approved. So that forced us to fall back on existing public faucets. But fortunately, we found one faucet that is way more reliable than all the other one, Infra. So go create your free account on Infra. That's my favorite faucet and my favorite blockchain API. Thanks for watching. I will see you next time. Bye.